Do you think, pilots of fighter aircrafts have to worry about taking sharp turns at very high speeds? Do you know that a pilot making such sharp turns may experience forces of acceleration that are many times the force of gravity experienced by us on the Earth? What do you think can happen to the body of a pilot under the effect of sustained high acceleration? Why do you think we referred to sharp turns, in particular, at high speeds? What is the role of the centripetal or radial acceleration while making such turns? Do you even know what centripetal acceleration is? Watch this video till the end, if you want to know what it is. To understand all this, we have to start somewhere. Let us start from a point in a two-dimensional space. Nothing can be more basic, after all. We can describe the position of this point, say P, by some multiple of unit vectors, I and J. Here, I and J, are vectors of unit length pointing along the X and Y axis, respectively. This pair, I and J, in terms of which any vector can be expressed are also called as the basis vectors or the basis. Let us assume that to join the point, P, with the origin, we have to draw an arrow of some length, A, oriented at an angle theta relative to the x-axis. Because this arrow has both a length and a specific direction, it will be a vector, which we can call vector A. Hope you understand what vectors are. Let us call the projection of this vector, A, along the x-axis as AX. This means that AX is the x component of the vector A along I or the x-axis. Similarly, let us call AY as the projection of vector A along J or the y-axis. We hope that you have understood what we have done till now. We have just taken a point in a two-dimensional plane, and represented its position and direction with respect to the origin of the 2D plane with a vector, A. Now, from basic trigonometry, we can see that, AX is equal to, A times cosine of theta, and, AY is equal to, A times sine of theta. And the square of the magnitude of A, is equal to AX squared plus AY squared. From the figure on your screen, you can see that the angle theta is the inverse tangent of AY divided by AX. Let us make the whole situation a little dynamic by introducing motion. So, now our point, P, is not fixed, but is moving in the two-dimensional x-y plane. We will label its position at any time t, by the vector r at t. And because the particle is in motion, its position at a small time interval, t plus delta t, later can be labeled similarly, as r at t plus delta t. From r at t and r at t plus delta t, we can get the change in the particle's position. That is by how much the particle has moved in the small time interval. From the figure, on the screen, we can see that it is, i times delta x, plus j times delta y, and the velocity of this particle will be, i times dx by dt added to j times dy by dt. Having calculated the change in position and the velocity of a particle moving in two-dimensional plane, we will now introduce a special case of motion in the 2D plane. Consider a particular case of the position vector r, at time t of the moving particle. For this special case, let us assume that the position vector, r, at time t, is given by capital R multiplied by, i times cosine of omega t, added to j times sine of omega t. No need to worry. This is very similar to what we considered in the beginning, when we represented the position of a stationary particle by the vector a. What we have done now, is that we have introduced motion, and assumed that the angle theta is equal to some constant, which we call, omega, multiplied by a variable, t, that represents time. We have also assumed that the length of the arrow from the origin to the moving point, p, remains constant, and is represented by capital R. By looking at the vector, r, that joins the origin to the moving particle, is there any way to know what this particle is doing exactly? You will agree, that it is hard to know that, just by looking at the equation of the position vector. So, let us do some algebraic manipulations, and see if we can decipher anything useful about the motion of this particle. First, 
First, let us have a look at the square of the magnitude of the vector r, in our special case. The square of its magnitude, is equal to, the sum of the squares of the projections of the vector r, on the x and y axis, that is, rx squared plus ry squared. Where rx is equal to capital R times cosine of theta, and ry is equal to capital R times sine of theta. And theta is equal to omega t. So, rx squared plus ry squared is equal to capital R squared multiplied by cosine square omega t plus sine square omega t. We know that cosine square omega t added to sine square omega t is equal to 1. This leaves us only with capital R squared. This means that rx squared added to ry squared is equal to capital R squared. Does this equation look familiar? Have a close look at it. It represents the trajectory of the moving particle, in our special case. And, this is the equation of a circle. It means that the particle is moving in a circle of radius capital R. Or in other words, the path traced by the particle, as it moves, is circular. Do you remember, we had assumed omega to be a fixed number? The other term, t, in omega t, represented time, which is changing continuously. And because the angle theta, in our special case is equal to omega t, it means that the angle changes at a constant rate, omega, with time. And the particle will go round and round in a circle. Having introduced all the complexities in our model, it is time to simplify it a little. So, let us suppose that the particle started its journey along the positive x-axis, at time t is equal to zero. We have already seen that with time, the angle, omega t also changes at a constant rate. If we want to know the time, capital T, at which this particle will come back to its starting point, on the x-axis again, then we will have to set omega times capital T as twice of pi. Do you know, why twice of pi? This is because while using radians, we can equate a full cycle to twice of pi. A radian is just another way to measure angles. And a full circle is worth 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. Similarly, a half circle is 180 degrees or simply, pi radians. And a quarter circle, is half a radian. Because omega times capital T is 2 pi radians. It implies that omega is equal to twice of pi divided by capital T. And, if f is the frequency, which is equal to 1 divided by capital T, then omega is equal to twice of pi multiplied by the frequency. The frequency f, measured in hertz, is the number of cycles per second. In every cycle, the particle rotates by 2 pi radians, and it completes f revolutions per second. This means, that omega, which equals twice of pi times f, and is called the angular velocity, measures the number of radians swept out per second. In other words, angular velocity is a measure of the rate of change of angular position with time. We may also want to know how fast the particle is moving that is, what its speed is. What we know is that the particle is going around in a circle and its angle is increasing at a steady rate, omega. This would imply that it also has a steady speed. The speed can be calculated by finding the rate of change of its position vector r, with time. Which means that we have to find the derivative of the position vector r, with respect to time t. This will give us the velocity vector, which you can see on the screen. At time t equals zero, the magnitude of the velocity is omega times capital R multiplied by cosine of zero, and it is pointing in the direction of the unit vector j. Though the direction of the velocity vector is changing continuously, its magnitude is always fixed at omega times capital R. But at whatsoever speed it is moving, the direction of the velocity vector always remains tangential to the circle. That is why we call it as tangential velocity. We can also establish the constant speed of the tangential velocity by computing its square, as shown on the screen. We get the same result this way too. 
Because the direction of the tangential velocity is changing continuously, this means that it has a non-zero acceleration. To find the acceleration, we take the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time. The derivative of the velocity vector gives the acceleration as shown on the screen. The magnitude of the acceleration is omega squared times capital R. This is a very important result, because it tells us that even when a particle is moving in a circle at a constant speed v, it still has an acceleration, called a centripetal, or center-seeking acceleration. The centripetal acceleration is always directed radially inwards towards the center in uniform circular motion. Its magnitude is omega squared times capital R. It can also be written as tangential velocity, V squared, divided by capital R. The presence of non-zero acceleration despite constant speed reflects the fact that velocity is a vector, which changes even if the speed remains constant and only the direction is changing. Even if the particle is not moving fully around a circle but is instead traversing just a quarter of the circle, it will still have the same acceleration directed towards the center. This means that we don't have to be actually moving in a circle to get the acceleration, V squared divided by capital R. Rather, if at any instance, the curve that a particle is following can even locally be approximated as part of a circle, then it will experience a non-zero acceleration directed towards the center of the circle. And this is even so, if the particle is moving at a constant speed. Hope you are now able to appreciate the force that will be experienced in making a sharp turn at a high speed. This force is due to the centripetal acceleration, and is directed radially inwards towards the center of a particle in circular motion. This is all we will cover in this video. As a quick recap, we covered uniform circular motion. That is, a particle moving in a circle at constant speed. We also learned how to calculate its angular velocity and centripetal acceleration in this video. Thank you for watching. Like the videos and subscribe to the channel. And stay tuned for more.